What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. My name is Chris and today we are looking at update 2019.28.2 on the Tesla Model 3. I'm gonna have a few different sections where we look at the release notes, test out the new features, and I'll do a little autopilot testing as well. So timestamps will be in the description if you wanna skip around. Let's get to it. All right, so first off, let's look at the release notes. Uh, first, and this is the most exciting to me, is you can link your profile to your phone. So now this says Dirty Tesla, that's me. Uh, when I get in the driver's seat with my phone, it's automatically gonna switch to this profile when I hit the brake. If Stephanie gets in the car and she has her phone in her pocket, of course, and she hits the brake, it'll change the seat and the steering wheel and the mirrors to the settings that she has set. So that's a huge improvement. And if you're both in the car, it actually knows who's in the driver's seat. So we're gonna test that out. And then chess, which is pretty fun. We'll play a little chess. I'm not that great. And then controller support for beach buggy racing, which is really nice because, you know, the steering wheel is kind of fun, but if you want to actually be good, a controller will be good. So I got a couple controllers to test out there. Uh, media volume improvements. You, when you would get out of the car before and you open the driver's side door, the volume of the radio would go down. Well, now that happens with any door. So it helps like when passengers are getting in and out. And then dog mode improvements. If you didn't hear, there was actually kind of a scary bug with dog mode where if you enable dog mode and then you change the fan speed, dog mode just wouldn't work. So you'd walk away from the car and, and the air conditioning wouldn't come on. So that's a pretty scary situation, but luckily Tesla patched it within like two days of hearing about it. So the way the driver profiles used to work is whatever the last profile that was set, the car would just go to that. So if I was driving and Stephanie hopped in, it would just go to my profile. So right now I have her phone in my pocket and I've turned off the Bluetooth on my phone, I'm gonna get in the car and I'm gonna see if it will go to her setting when I hit the brake. Okay, so again, Bluetooth is off on my phone, hit the brake, and look at that. It goes to Stephanie's setting. Okay, I reset it to my profile. I'm gonna walk away and let the car lock. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn Bluetooth on on my phone. I'm gonna set it on the passenger side of the car and I'm gonna go in with Stephanie's phone and see even if it detects my phone, if it'll go to her setting since she's on the driver's side. Okay, so my phone is connected to the car. I'm just gonna leave it on the passenger side here. I still have Stephanie's phone in my pocket, hit the brake, and it goes to her profile. So let's switch it, put her phone on the passenger side, my phone in my pocket. All right, the car's locked. Stephanie's phone is on the passenger side. So I get in with my phone and it does my profile. That is a huge improvement. So now even if you're both in the car, whoever's driving, it's gonna automatically go to their profile. Really cool. All right, so we're in the arcade, just really quick. We can play chess for a second. Uh, you know, it's just chess as you know it. So the Tesla computer thinks about what it wants to do. And I got rocked, so that was fun. Okay, so back in the arcade, let's try out Beach Buggy 2. I have a couple controllers. I have this nice uh, USB N64 controller, which I love. And this one I don't think will work, um, but the Steam controller. So we'll try it. I notice on these settings here, they didn't update this. It just says support to touchscreen and steering wheel controls. They didn't say anything about the controllers yet. I plugged in the N64 controller and it lit right up. So hopefully this is going to work. All right, good news. It actually does work. So it doesn't work on the menus, but this is really cool. So uh r1 is to go obviously you can see i'm steering with the thumbstick and then i think z no z doesn't do anything but this is this is pretty sweet that that this works i need to try the steam controller again because maybe it does actually work so i'll put a link to this n64 controller down below i got it on amazon a long time ago so i don't know if it'll still be around but uh, that's pretty awesome and then oh it says a and b let's see should be the moon so a and b are not connected but you can use your power up. So this is the B right here, you can see. And then this one is A when I have a power up here. So A is down, so now I'm using that. That's pretty sweet. All right, let me try the steam controller. Okay, so we have the steam controller in, but it looks like it's stuck going right. So steam controller kind of works, but it doesn't work. Let me unplug that. Yeah, it's just kind of stuck. So Steam Controller doesn't work, but that N64 controller was awesome. All right, now we're gonna go out and do some autopilot testing. 
it's pretty common for Tesla to make improvements in the software or an autopilot that they don't specifically mention in the release notes. Uh, so I always like to test this out. All right, so 2019.28.2, let's uh, do some autopilot testing. There's always something in the background that Tesla's tweaking and not telling us about. So let's see what we can discover with this one. So we're coming up to this stopped car and the Tesla seemed to react to it way earlier than it used to. Uh, it used to kind of come up on stopped cars really quickly and then all of a sudden kind of hit the brakes like it was almost surprised, you know, that the car was there. Um, but I've noticed that choice now. Um, so I think that's a pretty big improvement. Okay, so here's the road again uh, with no painted lines that I tested in my last video. Uh, and it looks like the car can still handle that. That's good. I don't see why it wouldn't. Ugh, going around that bend is always a little scary, but the car did it perfectly. And back to having lines. We'll see if the car can merge onto the highway on its own here, as Tesla advertises. So still not doing anything. Got a curve coming up. The car's slowing on its own. Really good. Perfect. And then navigate on autopilot turns itself on. Car's a little confused, uh, but here we go. All right, no, let's go. It's highway time. Up the speed see if the car can complete that whole thing on its own including merging onto the highway so I'm still not doing anything and it looks like we'll have perfect spacing here so should turn the turn signal on but it's not going to getting really close to that truck and then hitting the brake that was not very smooth but uh, it technically did it I suppose Right, turning on the turn signal right as people enter our blind spot here and wow really good uh, pretty narrow gap there and the car got in perfectly really really good so that guy has his turn signal on and I don't know the gap was kind of perfect for him to get in uh, I don't know wasn't paying attention here I guess I'll look back at the video but it seemed like the car locked onto him and let him in, but it was hard, hard for me to tell. I was trying to watch what he was doing. All right, so this is pretty disappointing. You can see if I turn navigate and autopilot back on, it wants to change lanes to follow route, which it doesn't need to do, and I wish that would get fixed because this is the lane I want to be in for this part of the road, and it's been like this since I got the car. So some of those map issues are still there and it's annoying. So when I get to this point, I just turn that off and don't have to worry about it. All right, so taking our exit, I really didn't notice much of a difference. The car performed really well on the highway. Um, I'll try some off-highway stuff here, uh, things that it's not really advertised to do, but sometimes does. Um, but I do have another autopilot challenge coming up soon. Uh, so check those out if you haven't seen that. Uh, this one should be pretty good. I'm, I'm a little nervous for it. I don't know if the car is going to be able to handle it, but uh, that's the point, right, is to challenge it. I'm hitting accelerator, making it go, and it did that right turn on its own. Uh, not very well, but it did it, so that's cool. So yeah, here's another example. Look how early it's slowing for that car. I mean, it wasn't even on the display yet. That's crazy. Uh, that's really good. Uh, like I said before, it would like get surprised, like, oh, there's a car stopped there and kind of hit the brakes quickly. Um, so that is a huge improvement. Really early detection of that truck up there. The car hit the brakes as that uh, blue truck went across the lanes. All right, so a little bit of autopilot on the dirt roads. That was really early activation. I can't say just from that that it's improved from the last version, but uh, usually I can't activate it at that spot. I do have videos fully dedicated to autopilot working on the dirt road, so check those out. I'll link those above. All right, so a few versions ago, the car could do this really sharp turn. Uh, but last test it couldn't, so let's see. Nope, it's gonna fly right off of there, so gotta take over. And the biggest thing I noticed is 
uh, stopping when you're coming up to either a completely stopped car ahead of you or cars that are stopping quickly in front of you seems hugely improved. The car used to seem to be surprised um, when it come up on a stopped car and now it sees it really early. It was even seeing the stopped cars before they were showing up on the screen and it was making a very gradual stop uh, just like you know a person would do. All right well that's gonna be it for this one. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions leave them below and I'll see you in the next video.